Hello everyone, welcome to episode 6 of my podcast. Today I have Rami Alemi. He's an ex-lawyer. Uh, he's a current lawyer, I think. He's a startup founder as well. He'll introduce himself and then I'm going to start with the topic. Uh, Rami, hello, man. Hi, 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 John. Hi, John. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm actually a lawyer. I, uh, I studied in Lebanon, um, did my, my studies in law and in finance, and then went to New York, uh, worked there at an international law firm called Cadwalla de Wickersham and Taft, worked for the United Nations before coming back to Lebanon uh, and uh, starting Lexium. So um, I decided to start Lexium when I saw the startup ecosystem in the region, in Lebanon and across the region, really scaling uh, to, to record highs in the, in the years 2015, 2016. Uh, and I saw the huge need for legal. So yeah. uh, lawyers were not really adapted to the new way the young people would do business, to the new way the, the, the entrepreneurs would want to receive legal services. They, they were still uh, hiding behind their, their expensive suits, the wooden background, the big offices. Uh, they would charge uh, crazy amounts of money for very basic tasks. And uh, I saw this niche that uh, we could build a startup that can automate the basic tasks for startups, for entrepreneurs. Yeah. They could pay much less. Yani we would cut we would cut drastically the, the, legal, the legal bill for, for entrepreneurs and for startups. And at the same time, we, we could scale internationally and provide uh, kind of legal services to startups in different countries. I know, uh, just to explain, uh, startup law or, or the, the, the legal stuff that are related to startups are common all around the world. Yani in, in most in most jurisdictions around the world, be it Lebanon, be it Beirut, be it Dubai, be it uh, New York, be it San Francisco, be it LA, uh, the same contracts repeat themselves. So you have the service agreement, you have NDAs, you have uh, certain types of, of term sheets, uh, investment agreements like the KISS, KISS agreement or SAFE agreement. These are kind of common uh, wherever you go in any active startup ecosystem. And yeah. so this is kind of where we we saw scalability and we saw need at the same time. And we saw that there was an opportunity for a startup that could scale. And effectively uh, in 2018, we got an investment from 500 startups, which is the second biggest investment company uh, that invests in startups around the world after Y Combinator. Yeah. Um, and so uh, alongside Y Combinator, and, and yeah. at 500 startups, we don't like to, but yeah, so alongside Y Combinator. Uh, so we were very proud of that. So we went to San Francisco, we got to establish in the US, and today we are operating uh, in the US, in, uh, in the MENA region, and in the GCC as well. Yeah. So that's kind of who I am in a nutshell and what's Lexium. Yeah, this is amazing, actually, and congrats on all the milestones. But uh, I want to go back to, to where, when you were in a job in the States, I think. So yeah. did you leave to come back right. to Lebanon because you had a startup idea in mind or did you leave for whatever reason? And when you were here, you were like, okay, I'm going to go for a startup. Okay, so, so I think that, uh, and I think any entrepreneur would tell you that uh, it's, it's usually a mixture of things that make you really jump into the startup field. Yeah. Um, it's it's not it's not just one thing usually. So, I was working crazy hours in New York. I was working like from uh, literally from seven a.m. to one one a.m. in the morning. Coming back, my my apartment was just across the street from the office, so that I could have time to sleep. Yeah. Because if it if I had a long commute, it would have been very difficult. We I had uh, at the office we had a mandatory forty minute massage massage session on a daily basis. So we had to. It's the first take time I ever session. hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the yeah. office, we had yeah, our office was around forty stories and yeah. forty floors. We were around fifteen hundred uh, lawyer between lawyers or admins or operations. Uh, so we had a massage parlor uh, in <laughs> yeah. the building dedicated for the office because a lot of lawyers would get overstressed and they would need a kind of relaxation. To, yeah. like, we have we had a gym. We had everything. We had coffee machines. We had everything for us to remain at the office. So it was very tiring. At the same time, I had heard about Circular 331 in Lebanon that gave 
uh, money for startups that was supposed to give much more money for startups in 2013. And I started thinking about what can be done. And the first idea that came to mind is to come back and work uh, on, on a law firm for startups. So it wasn't, uh, whoever tells you that I had the idea from the start and it was this like billion dollar idea, yeah, this yeah. is wrong. You start with something and then you build on it. So I started with a law firm for startups. I started with uh, just wanting to come back and uh, establishing something that would cater for startups. And then events happened. Yeah, I, I did not come back. I did not even decide to come back until uh, I had a personal family reason. My grandfather was very sick and he had raised me. Uh, so I decided to come back to stay next to him at the hospital. And I, I found out that I couldn't go back because his situation was getting worse and worse. And, um, and so I contacted the firm and told them, guys, I need to stay in Lebanon. I can work remotely. But at the, ta- at the time, remotely was not an option. Yeah, yeah. So had it been today, they would have told me, sure, you can stay and you can work. And there's, there are all the systems, you can do the meetings, everything. But in 2015, imagine like, that's yeah, six years ago. Yeah. That's not no so no one even knew about Zoom. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't common. Yeah. And so the answer was no, either you come back or you lose your contract. And so I ended up losing my contract. And yeah. uh, starting January, January 2015, I had lost my contract. I found, I found myself without a job, uh, staying at the hospital. My grandfather passed away on the 2nd of February. And I was so like saddened and 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 like in a very bad place. Yeah, because you feel uh, like everything is is crumbling at the same it time. Crumbled. Yeah, it, yeah. It crumbled. Like, thought I was in Rock December. Bottom. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Jean, on December second, uh, twenty fourteen, yeah, and three months prior, I was sitting in a penthouse in New York. I had all my clothes. I had all my. I, yeah. I, I was making money as a yeah, lawyer yeah. in New York. You make a lot of money. So I, I, ha- I was at a reputable law firm. I had my suits. I had my parties. Uh, I was doing parties at home. Everything was, was like doing great. Yeah. And suddenly... And on February 2nd, yeah. I was without a job. My apartment in New York, I couldn't keep it. And the, the owner actually threw all my clothes to the garbage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I didn't have a job. My grandfather has passed away, had passed away. So I was in deep shit. So what I did as a reaction was I said to myself, like, really, uh, screw it. I'm going to open my firm and I don't care. I don't want to go back to New York. I don't want to apply for a job. On, Jan- on February 5th, I took my contract at Regis, which is a co-working uh, kind of uh, yeah. shared space thing in downtown Beirut. Uh, so I took my contract on February 5th, 5th three days after my grandfather passed, passed, passed yeah. away. I opened my office. It had no windows. So it literally had, it was yeah. the cheapest off. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And literally, bro, it was, it had no one. You just, you just needed a chair. You just need some, yeah, some place exactly. to sit. Yeah. 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 I did, uh, I did the small, small uh, posters, hey, small posters saying I'm providing advice yeah. for startups. And uh, I started uh, getting clients. I thought so this was not contact. a startup yet. This was just you. It was a law firm. It was a law firm for startups. Yeah. Yeah, it was and, the, the, whole, the whole law firm was just Rami. Yeah, it was yeah. Rami and Tala. Tala, who yeah. was the virtual assistant. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the virtual email that, that yeah. would send the invoices, <laughs> the engagement letters, yeah. everything. Uh, please and wait, Tala will, uh, will respond to you. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Tala will reply to yeah. your email. And, um, and so whoever got an email from Tala, Tala it does not <laughs> exist. It does not exist in no way. So, uh, so yeah, and by the first year, I had 50 clients um, because no one was catering for startups at the time. Big yeah. law firms did not see startups as an opportunity. They, they didn't pay a lot. They, uh, they asked a lot of questions. They were very stingy because they didn't have funding. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, they were quite uh, aggressive because they wanted their, their, their job done fast. Yeah. And law firms tend to take time in doing so. So, uh, so they came to me. So I was the first and I got 50 clients in the first year, 50 startups, which was amazing for Lebanon at the time. Um, 2016 saw a boom for Aurorus. We, we uh, started signing uh, clients like uh, VCs, venture capital firms. We worked with MEVP, one of the biggest yeah. uh, venture capital firms in Lebanon. Uh, we worked with a lot of VCs at the time as well. 
And in 2017, we realized, and I had realized the need for Lexion, that really everything that we were doing, we could do it online in a software providing uh, something that is scalable. Yeah. And so this is when we got the idea. We joined an incubator in Lebanon and then uh, it the all went uh, north. <laughs> yeah, yeah the rest. I, I have a question about that. Do you think that just uh, about the legal issues with, with startups, you said that some of the issues are ha having no budget, being stingy, being aggressive. But at the same time, I think from my own personal experience that startups, uh, when putting priorities, one of the last things they think about is legal aspects. Okay. I don't know if it's a problem of awareness. Maybe no one tells them that it's not the case that if you're just a startup means that you don't have any legal requirements to, to protect yourselves and your firm. So mm -hmm. the, every, every startup I met with or worked with, they'd be like, okay, I'm still very small. When I become a big corporate, I'll, I'll have a lawyer do everything. But uh, following you for a while, I know that there are th even legal things that you can do before actually having the startup. And, that's and, true. That's true. Uh, and they are legal things you do when you launch and legal things you do after you launch when you sign people so that's a lot of a lot of problems with i don't know if it's just lebanese startups or small startups in general when they are just launching out they tend to just throw away the legal aspect because it's not the time or or there's nothing to do it's not worth it so so that's how can, totally. can we actually raise awareness towards that and how can we show the importance of of having legal aspects and what legal wh why why would you even go into legal matters before even launching, for example, or just that's, when we're starting that's out? So true. That's so true. Honestly, uh, I'm going to be very honest with you. We have thought about this problem very deeply. We, we decided at Lexium yeah. to say, literally to say, screw legal, screw legal. Okay. We're not going to raise the awareness. What we're going to do is we're going to make it so simple, so simple that you don't need to complicate it in your head and you don't need to put it at the end of the, of the, of the ladder. So our approach is to try to make things as simple as really just uh, having in a few clicks, having a company in a few clicks, generating a contract yeah. in a few clicks, uh, uh, requesting a certain advice simple but uh, remaining with the same importance and same exactly yeah exactly yeah. exactly because i i tend to understand startups because i i'm an entrepreneur as well uh when you start you have so many problems you have so many problems you have the problem of actually surviving yeah why why, why do startups go into incubators incubators are the the machines that are that just give them uh, a place to survive. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. When a baby is born, he is put or she is put in an incubator. Exactly. To help them survive the yeah. first hours of life. And so same things for same thing for uh, a startup. A startup has to worry about just breathing. So they cannot. We, I cannot ask them to be aware of legal uh, when they are trying to survive. Yeah. It's just as asking you, do you prefer oxygen or do you prefer to register a company? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oxygen you see what yeah, i mean yeah so our our approach is different is not to raise awareness where we definitely do raise awareness but that's not how we think we're going to solve the problem uh the way we're going to solve the problem is through making it as simple and as easy and as seamless as possible this yeah. is how we believe that startups will start will begin focusing on their legal uh what we do is that we tell you you start you you begin your project you sign up on lexium is free you sign up you start putting all your documents all the documents you receive start putting them on lexium yeah don't do anything else once you are faced with one contract with any employee or service provider go to lexium just read a few a few lines watch it watch some videos generate your agreement it takes 10 10 to 15 minutes yeah do it that's it yeah Finish. Go we'll talk to your lawyer so that he replies, so that he gives you an answer. This is exactly the idea we have about legal. The, the, the people that do not yeah. know yeah. how simple it can be. So so this is a, a very big problem that Lexium act, actually solves. It's like, no, going into legal does not mean going from court to court and lawyer to lawyer and, and having exactly. a bunch of papers in front of you. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And waiting for the lawyer to send you the quotation yeah. and then send you the, the, the contract. And then you'd remind the lawyer what happened with my contract. And then he'd tell you, I'm going to send it. Yeah. And yeah. Then yeah. So exactly. It's, it's, exactly. It's complicated. Yeah. Yeah. 
and and, and Rami, what are the the most common legal issues startup face face at first and that okay. they most of the time realize it when it's too late or like oh we should have done the, this uh that's we should have done that question. yeah i love it. i love it i love it uh, uh, because that's exactly what we yani, what we struggle with to the utmost extent yeah uh first and foremost first and foremost and that's without a doubt the biggest problem that any startup faces and they do not realize it until it's really too late is the co-founder agreement yeah what so, does it do what does this so agreement do when you are working with with founders with co-founders so you're a team of people what happens at first is that there is this kind of bar- barrier the social barrier that we're not going to talk about percentages accurately we're not going to talk about our roles accurately yeah we're not going to talk about our obligations accurately and we're going to not going to be very straightforward we'd say to ourselves it's fine okay you do this you do that we're uh, friends uh, we'll talk later exactly yeah. Exactly. yeah that's the biggest mistake that any startup does because 80% even more at points uh, of startups fail because of problems between the founders. Yeah. Not because of the product, not because of the market, product market fit, not because of the uh, the lack of investment, but because of a fight between founders. This is how startups fail. Yeah. Just imagine at Lexium, we are three years down the road. We are, uh, we have raised uh, over $500,000 in, in investment. Uh, at valuations exceeding 5 million up until today all our shares are unvested so technically all the shares that i own are still owned by lexium as a company yeah. and i didn't get them. so if i were to leave today lexium i would get zero shares yeah and and when do they become uh, in, invested or uh, so yeah uh, for us it's in 2023 and who chooses that you or uh, it's just how, how it works we chose it yeah we chose it yeah I chose it because I wanted all the founders to either dedicate and remain at the company or just leave. Yeah, this is how you know if if, if your co-founders or partners are here for the money, the quick money, exactly. or they, they see the vision that you have. And, and that's exactly. because being co-founders, you have a higher purpose than just making short-term money. You want to actually exactly. build a sustainable structure for the whole startup to, to, to remain going. You don't want just yeah. to make, okay, let's make a few thousand dollars tomorrow and that's it, we're satisfied. So exactly, uh, exactly. yeah, and and for Lexio, you yeah, you don't make money. Actually, I'm gonna be very honest. Uh, uh, you don't make money. Uh, a startup is not a startup is a vision. You make money at the end if yeah. you succeed. If you're one of the lucky ones and one of the hardworking ones who succeed at the end, yes, you do make a lot of money. Yeah, and you do become uh, hugely wealthy. You do make a lot of money. You make a lot of. Uh, uh, a lot of exp- you get a lot of exposure but that's after so much hard work it's not like for example in e-commerce e-commerce you start making money from day one yeah and you start generating revenue and you're you're there not knowing what to do with your very should you reinvest it and stuff no in startups it's not the same definitely it's, it's, it's a whole journey it's a whole journey yeah it's it, a whole journey exactly. it becomes a way of life that's so true yeah that's how so you true. sleep how you eat the people you see where you go out yeah so i i remember i remember uh, the first a year when I had the startup law firm, uh, actually the first two months, literally, I had an air mattress at the office. Yeah. I had an in, in, in yeah. downtown Beirut, the office that had no windows. I yeah. had an air mattress <laughs> and I had a subscription at the gym because he happens to be my friend, the guy who owns the fitness zone uh, in yeah. Lebanon. He happens to be a, a very close friend and a neighbor. He was my neighbor in my childhood. So he gave me a subscription at the time at the gym. And so I used to sleep in, on the air mattress and shower at the gym. So I would do, like, yeah. I would go to the gym and then shower and then go to the, uh, sleep on the air mattress to work and then wake up early and continue working. This is crazy. This so, is crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's you, a way of life. But if you, you think it about it, this is, it's a great part of your story. Yeah. You, you yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. You enjoy it. It got you so, here. It got you to where you exactly, are now. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it becomes part of you. It's not yeah. getting you don't brag about it. You don't. Um, it's just who it's you are. It's just who you are. Exactly. If yeah. someone doesn't have the vision, they will not enjoy it. Definitely. They will try to do it, but they will not enjoy it. And yeah. that's the that's the problem. So so yeah. Yeah. You have you have to be, believe in it. You have to to believe in your startup. Not just be like, okay, I'm just gonna work hard and make money and get out. Just, because exactly. you know, a startup is not made to make money, as you said. 
if if that's the case, the just go work at a job, make whatever money you want, and leave. Uh, so exactly. that means, this exactly. brings me back to, to one question that I had in mind. So Lexium itself is a startup yeah. that provides legal yeah. services, but but for yeah. Lexium, is there any legal obligations yeah. for Lexium itself when you register Lexium? So legal for legal, for example, if you get me. Uh, is it different or is it so the same? That would be us. That that would be us as lawyers. So we are providing kind of legal for Lexium. Uh, and I know what I meant. The is fact that what I makes Lexium uh, official or or authorized to provide legal services. Uh, that's a very interesting question. So uh, actually, it's the founders, uh, and that's it's the founders that kind of get give the credibility to, to the company. Yeah. Uh, Lexium as a legal service provider. Uh, could not have done it had the founders not been lawyers. Yeah. If I was not a lawyer, my co-founder, uh, my co-founders were not lawyers. Uh, we would have not uh, been able to actually give credibility to Lexium. So yeah. behind Lexium are the founders, are the founders, and that's that's a huge barrier to entry uh, to a market that has a lot of potential. Uh, this is something, this is why 500 startups were rushing to put money in, into Lexium because they believed that the fact that it's done by lawyers, it closes the door on a lot of people providing the same model yeah. as Lexium uh, and not being lawyers. So yeah. you'd have to pick from lawyers. And the, as a matter of the fundamental structure of the lawyer's career does not permit a jump in, at least at the time, did not permit a jump into startups because once a lawyer would reach New York, they would be making 10, 12, 15K per month. Yeah. So why the hell yeah. would they come back to sleep on an air mattress to build a solution and to uh, to struggle all, all, all this time just to make money in, in five to 10 years if they were- If it works, money. yeah. You see? So yeah. Yeah. that's why 500 startups were, were very eager to put money uh, in Lexion because they believe that it's done by law by lawyers. There's a huge barrier to entry. It's a solution that can be very scalable, and uh, there's a lot of profit margin in the yeah. in the legal industry, and there's a lot of potential. Yeah, th this is so, so, yeah. truly inspiring, actually. But I, I have one more question be before we get to the end of the podcast. So okay. uh, I heard once you or or maybe a friend of yours say that even if you have a very small business or or any brand, just trademark yeah. it or or get it registered in whatever way possible because okay it might be cheap in lebanon but we we uh, as a lebanese ecosystem of small businesses uh, small shops and uh, everything uh, related to that we tend to like okay but wh who's going to care who's going to come to me uh, why would i even pay to to get it trademarked and uh, we don't see the importance of of doing such thing we don't see an importance of getting the, the government in a way involved in our business so a small true. business actually so that's true, that's how do we do we clarify that or, or what's the importance of having something trademarked so, so uh, actually i always tell startups to uh to, to really register their trademark because first of all in lebanon is super cheap yeah it's super super cheap. yeah we can start at around five hundred and fifty thousand lebanese pounds yeah i'm sorry just putting the charger yeah, yeah no problem so uh, we start at around uh, around 550 uh, Lebanese pounds, which is very minimal. On the international level as well, it starts at around 200, 300 dollars to register your trademark. Yeah. Be it in the US, be it in uh, in Europe, be it in uh, across in the GCC, it's a bit more expensive, but still it's doable. Uh, why? Because a startup's value is not, you know, a startup is not making money at first. Yep. So its value comes from its intellectual property. That's yeah. kind of the, the way the way it goes. So if, if I were to talk to an investor and I don't have a trademark, for example, it would not show credibility, number one. Potentially, if I'm building a brand, uh, anyone can come and take this, this, this trademark and then I would lose my brand. So I poured in so much money into the startup, but somehow... I, I lost the brand, so it's not logical. And last thing, when I'm raising uh, funding on the international level, yeah. these, this is part of the legal the legal requirements that is that are needed. Yeah. So coming back just to the question, because you had asked me, what are the problems that startups face at first? So I told yeah. you the co-founder agreement, but also the IP, the intellectual property. So we always advise. So if you are an entrepreneur today, 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 and you want to start your business. 
three things I would ask you to, to, to complete from a legal perspective, three documents that I would ask you to complete that we offer at Lexium for free. Yeah. For free. The co-founder agreement for starters, for early starters in Lebanon specifically, and in certain jurisdictions, we offer it for free. So the co-founder agreement, the, the IP assignment agreement, and that's very important where every founder, so Jean, if you are a founder, you assign everything, every intellectual property you do to the company. Yeah. Okay. That's the second document. And the third document is a service agreement between you, Jean, for example, as a co-founder and the company. So that you show that you have a legal relationship. You're an employee kind of of this company yeah. and you have certain obligations. So these three documents help you really structure your, 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 your startup from the start and evade problems with your founders, with your co-founders. Uh, on the intellectual property level with the investors later on, you evade a lot of problems. And with the service agreement, Kamena, you evade a lot of problems when any co-founder wants to leave okay, but you have an agreement, you have to give notice, you cannot leave just like that. Yeah. So that, these, are, these are kind of the advice I would give for really early uh, starters. Yeah, Th these are so, 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 such valuable advice actually. And because th these are real problems, real problems that real startups face. And most of the time, almost 90% of the time, they realize that this should have been done when it is exactly. too late. And, and exactly. as you said, this is why most startups fail at first, not because of their products, but because of the, the, the co-founders having a certain conflict. So, That's uh, true. yeah. So before I, I thank you for the podcast and everything, I want you to, to give us a piece of advice for people who were in a place where you were, where, where everything feels like it's falling apart at the same time. And yet they want to start something, but don't know what to do and feel like the whole world is again against them. You, you were at, the, at this place at a certain point in time. I was. I totally you, was. I uh, yeah, was. you're a living proof of someone who, who was there and now you're not. So yeah. it didn't happen by miracle and, and you did not teleport from where you were to where you are now. So at all. what can you tell to, to these people? So if I were to give an advice to anyone who's starting uh, or wants to start anything on, on the on work level for themselves, I would definitely look at uh, my past. So the first thing I would do, because listen, I, I believe I believe in, in energy. I'm, I'm a firm believer in energy. I'm yeah. a firm believer that each, each one of us has a, a certain path, has a certain journey that they have to fulfill in life. That's, that's, that's a belief, a deep belief I have. And I believe that uh, life would, would stand against you when you are not going in the in the route that you should be going to yeah. take, take you for example you started your agency you started getting complications and complications and complications for you to actually close this and go another route which potentially would turn out to be the route that you should be taking or even not even yeah. it could be something yeah. else yeah. Uh, so i would push people to really come back to what they love what they have done during their childhood what they liked what is their background? Because we are primed. I love to use the word primed. Yeah. Uh, we are primed uh, to, to reach a certain goal. For example, uh, for me in my childhood, it was never about legal. I, I didn't know anything about legal. I didn't want to go into law. But somehow my father was a lawyer. He never ob obliged me to, to go into law. But as I was growing up, I was primed towards, towards legal. I think uh, there's, there's a very interesting uh, movie uh, for I think by Will Smith. Uh, Pursuit of sure. Happiness. No, 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 not Pursuit of Happiness. It was. Um, um, what was it about? If you remember, I, I think so it's uh, about priming. Priming is a concept in marketing where you you actually start incepting the concept into the customer's mind yeah. without them noticing, without yeah. them noticing. Okay, so uh, I, I I need to to try to to check what is the what movie. is the movie? Yeah. Uh, but it talks about priming. It talks about uh, the way you are in your subconscious starts grasping certain ideas to reach yeah. you to a certain goal. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, I'm pretty sure it's uh, Will Smith. It's called Focus. It's Focus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A movie called Focus. Please watch it. Honestly, it gives you a lot of 
uh, insight on where you should start when you're starting your business. Look at what you were primed for. For example, uh, Jean, you look at if, if you look at your education, if you look at your experiences, you if you dig deep, you will find your way. You will yeah. find your way. You have you have found, but anyone else, I, I'm, yeah. I'm just giving an example because you're in front of me. Uh, uh, so, if I was I were to give one advice, please come back to the roots. Come back to your background. Come back to the roots, and this is where you would know what you need to do. I was in legal. I was primed towards legal when I lost everything. My my solution was to mix business with legal because I was passionate about business, but legal was something I was primed for. So I created a business in legal, and this is how it worked. This is this is amazing. This is such an yeah. inspirational thing. And and the, the beauty of it, it's that it's real. It's not it's not just something, it's not just a good story. It's it's a real exactly. thing that, that really we're, happened. We're a real basis, person. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And and you're still doing it, and you're you're still continuing exactly. the whole journey. And uh exactly. yeah, and and so with that, just want to, to thank you for the, the amazing podcast. It was thank you so much. Time Tom. passed thank so much. fast, and uh I think it is one of the most valuable podcasts yet, and it might be uh, like life saving for certain startups who might watch it. And uh, yep, so this was Rami Alemi, founder of Lexium Law. And uh, thank you so much again, man. Thank you, Jean. Thank you so much.